and uh, former prosecutor Monica Lindstrom. There are two sides to this thing. I mean, there are those who believe this is an absolutely step in the right direction, that the good people who want to protect themselves ought to be able to have guns. And then there are a lot of people who are like, look, if you start letting guns everywhere, if they're on the subways and in the, in the train stations and they're in the airports, you know, the biggest use of guns is for suicide and people, people, the people are going to go crazy. Let's begin with you, Monica. Where are you on this? Well, first of all, Shep, I'm actually very, very disappointed that we even have to talk about this. Did these lawmakers forget about 9-11 and the fact that airports were at the center of that tragedy? The last thing we need is for anybody who has a concealed weapons permit to carry guns inside the airport. There's no reason for it. There's just no justification. It cannot be done, and it should not be done. Well, you know, the all. other side makes the argument that there have been plenty of places where shootings were going down, where where guns were not allowed in the hands of law, honest, law-abiding citizens, and they make the argument, Joanna, that yeah. had they been allowed in those honest, everyday citizens' hands, that those honest, everyday citizens might have stopped chaos. Well, exactly, and, and since uh, Monica just invoked 9-11, as a New Yorker, I would have wanted someone in an airport, somebody to have a gun, because you want to know something? Nobody had anything. So to say that, that at post nine have to have a post 9-11, well, actually, well, ridiculous. if you let me finish, you have that their law allows no, people to have, well, you're not sense. letting me finish. Their law allows them at Monica, this time let her finish now, to Monica, it's be only able, fair. thank you very much, to be able to have on their transportation system on buses um, going to the airport. They're allowed to have guns. That's what their state law says. Nobody's asking for guns to go past the security uh, facility. So you're not going into the direct airport where people are. You and they're also allowed in restaurants and airports have restaurants. So they make it like a pseudo mall where people are and they're allowed to have no. their guns there. You, well, yes, they do. Well, now, you're saying right, no, you're but now that's now their law. Say. Here's the thing. <clears throat> We're at a point now, we're in election season. A gun issues yep. is going to be a divide and separate of folks. People are going to try to put yep. people on one side or the other. And because of the Absolutely. Supreme Court ruling that's just come, a uh, note to self, Shepard, turn off your cell phone Ooh. when you're on television. Uh, <laughs> because of this Supreme Court ruling that came down, there are going to be challenges to gun laws because of what happened in Washington yep. all over this country. So the battle is on here. This is just that's the beginning, right. yep. and it's starting apparently in Georgia. But well, why, this well, why is not, not about the right to bear arms. This is about safety in airports. We don't need just anybody carrying guns. The only people that should have guns are those trained law enforcement just anybody? officers. We have people who illegally safety. are carrying guns. So why wouldn't you want people who be able to protect themselves and if they have a sense of safety? And if you have law-abiding purse people That's carrying guns, argument. you don't have to it's worry. Safety. You don't have to worry if they're law-abiding. It's safety been a, this argument's been issue. around. Whoa. It's been around since Fluff was a kitten. She's a full-grown cat. She's not near. Relations to students when a man tapped me on the shoulder and was saying something. And suddenly I heard these words that really cut through. That husband of yours won't knock it off and he's having an affair with my teenage daughter. And your husband won't knock it off, so I had to come to you. Whew. Okay, so let's bring in our legal panel because this is a very legal issue. Joanna Greenwald is Thank a criminal you. defense attorney. She's worked on over a hundred matrimonial and custody issues. Yeah. Dr. Keith Ablo is a psychiatrist to help figure out the twistedness of all of this. Uh, he's of course a Fox News contributor and Mercedes Colwin is a Fox legal analyst. She is also has also worked on many contentious divorces including cases that involve infidelity which is often involved in uh, these kinds of court cases. Um, you know, so lots of drama going on in there, Joanna. And, and yeah. I want to actually, before I, I bring this up, I, I want to show you one more quote because there's a lot of juicy stuff coming out. And I've just been asking folks to keep building these full screens so we can get the quotes because uh, it's all coming from our producer who's in there. The next one says, I noticed some candles. This is when she went to a house. They own a couple of houses uh, in, the, in the Hamptons in New York. She says she went to the other house that they don't live in where no one was living. And here's what she saw. I noticed some candles that had been lit and burned on a kitchen table, beer and wine in the fridge. I walked through the house. We don't live there. I saw a bed in one of the rooms, blackout shades. There were sheets on a bed and a long black hair. I wonder who that belonged to. I mentioned it to Peter. He blamed it on the gardener who apparently has long black hair. Two, um, what do you make of all this, Joanna? I think it's a big mess, actually. I think that it's a travesty on, on any side of because the status and the, and the level that you look at in a matrimony is the best interest of the child standard and here we have children and there are no winners in this no there are no winners no matter how sorted this is going to come out 
you have children involved. So this is just a horrific situation. No matter whose fault you want to put it on somebody, you have children, and I just think it's just... It's just awful. It, you, this is about custody, but you say from what's gone on so far, you don't believe that Peter Cook wants custody. No, I really don't. Why? I, because it, if with my experience, uh, children are, especially for a woman, it's their Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. If you're going to try to come after me, you're going to say something about my kid. You know, that's, right. my, that's my weak spot. And so I often see that that's a chip. They really don't want custody. It's really about money or they want something else. So they're saying basically, oh, I want the children. They really don't. You'll see that magically come off the table when they get the things that they right. really want. And in here, they're fighting over assets, which I don't understand on top of everything else because they have a prenup. That's very clear, and, apparently. Well, a Something's wrong with the prenup. Something's wrong there because this, these issues, as far as assets, never should be coming up. Right. So the fact that he's raising them, he's putting that out there, yet a chip about the children. Right, I, I want to get to Dr. Ablo. Dr. Ablo, a lot of people look at this case and they say, look, the man's married to Christy Brinkley. So why is he cheating on her when he's married to a man, a woman uh. who most men would, you know, give their <laughs> right arm to be married to? What's that all about? Well, that's about the interior psychological world of this fellow. It's not about how pretty his wife is. And f frankly, you know what, that passion that's, uh, that's something that you know magnetizes people early on, it doesn't always last into the tenth year of marriage, as it hasn't in this case. And there's another thing at play here, which is, yeah, look, this is a woman you know, with that's four, when you have yeah. to work at it. That's when you get together Absolutely. and you say, you know. Uh, but, I, but I have a theory that I want to throw okay. your way. She's Christy Brinkley. She's a big shot, right? He's Christy Brinkley's husband. Uh, she has all the money. He wants to be with somebody that where he gets to be the big shot, right? Well, this look, young girl. The big daddy. He's a big daddy. Right? Okay. He's a big <laughs> artist. Mercedes, talk to me. And, a, and bend at the knee, oh, I'm not worthy, I'm not oh, worthy. Absolutely. Christy's it's not a, doing look, that. Look, I think that's a credible <laughs> theory, and yet I'm a man of the facts, right, as a psychiatrist, uh, as the, the good uh, attorney is, yes. the attorney's here. Um, but the bottom line is, here's a woman who's had now four marriages. One would urge her to have some insight and say, what is it? What am I not able to do? In, in all fairness, one of her husbands died, so he doesn't count, okay? The one well, who died fifth, is not a divorce. There'll be a fifth but marriage. It doesn't matter what the wife does, though. I mean, what does it say? If you're not a good wife, your husband's going to go out and cheat? No, you have to no, work no, at no, it. No, like no, Martha it's said, not a wife or husband. I'm just saying that it would be uh, psychologically um, untenable to say that a woman who is going to emerge into her fifth marriage has the capacity the wherewithal to have a complete intimate maybe relationship. Maybe I don't, I don't, I don't buy that at all. I don't buy that at all. What if she's selecting the wrong man? Well, that's Every, exactly right. Over but and why? over and again. But why? why? There might be some self-worth right. issues. You guys, insight. hold on one second exactly. because uh, we're just insight. getting brand new stuff that's coming through our urgent queue that's coming out of this. I hope it confirms my view. I don't think so. I'm sure it does. This is Christy talking to, I believe, Peter Cook's attorney. And he says, you've been testifying about things that happened two years ago. And she says, it's been two years of nightmare, of pure torture. It hasn't stopped. And he says, but you choose to do this. Courts are open because it's been proven in an open courtroom to get the truth. She said, I'm here to get a divorce that I've been trying to get for two years. Uh, he says, why not speak of anger? She says, that's because the anger is your creation, sir. sir you've chosen yeah. to make me into a caricature. Uh, and basically, you know, they talk about whether or not the children are being protected. She says, my children are safely away right now. Yeah. I guess suggesting that she has made sure that her children are in a place where they're not going to hear or, that, or get well, wind of any judge, of this. Well, that judge, honestly, Martha, could turn this all around against Christy and say, do you know what? You have uh, wanted this public flogging Absolutely. of Peter Cook. I'm not sure that you are the right guardian of these children because you're not putting the best interest of your children first. So I don't first. agree with that. I think that's, but that's a huge issue, though. I, I mean, do you look, have a look at what she's well, doing. Why would it's a you? public castration, well, exactly. well, I was just going to well, say uh, if, oh, if, sorry. if I may, you have head. a judiciary ruling where the judge, who has to uphold the best interest of the child standard, and so he's, he's the ultimate protector of these children, and he said that yes. having an open courtroom that this was okay. He right. said that they did not reach the level where it had to be a closed courtroom. And not for anything, he used the public domain to talk about his paramour. He went right. through that's newspapers to apologize wow. to Christie. Yeah. For and and I think that everything that's been out in this case is, been. you know, we, we've known a lot about this already. I, I, I think in this case, he's less worried about the kids hearing what's going on in there than he is about having himself, you know, dragged through the mud again. Yeah, uh, magically, he takes them for Sundays that. and they're going to the beach and now he's a good dad. But you want to know something? They're old enough and they go to school School, if he really cared, would he have gone, no, a, look, gone on TV? Right. Last thought from Dr. Keith, and then I gotta go. Him, uh, Please, yeah, Dr. Keith, go There's a certain kind of uh, prejudice against 
well, men may be alive here in the discussion. Are you in, feeling that at in this the table? Sense that, <laughs> no. Well, what did no, you say? No. Well, here's a guy who adopted her child after she had a, a very short marriage to a developer, Taubman, right. um, and, and who was a stand-up guy, presumably for some period of time, and I think that this desire to open the courtroom really does call into question, what kind of person is this? Right. She Where, kind of, where's she's the rage coming from? She's, to, you know I, I think a lot of people are having a tough time with the sympathy for him, and, and I think, you know, and, and she may, you know, let's assume she was horrible, everyone. right? So maybe she was horrible to him, but no, to, no, that's to take not advantage of this, well, not take advantage, but this, but why hurt know. the kids, Martha? Well, you wouldn't she, do it. But she's not allowed to make it. close the court. The important she's not allowed to come in public. A U.S. she's not allowed to keep talking, but I'm going to send it back to Trace in the newsroom. Trace, back to you. Yeah, you know, soaring gas prices expected to keep folks closer to home this holiday weekend.